My name is Jacob Levenrad and I live a pretty interesting life. In the last five or six years, I've been able to start and scale multiple seven figure businesses. And today I just have figured stuff out pretty well. At 21, I can proudly say that I make millions of dollars every year. And this whole journey has had like a lot of ups and downs. Through this video, I'm excited to show you guys and ideally motivate a lot of you guys on how exactly to do this yourself. And frankly, show you how I've been able to just achieve this like picturesque dream life. I'm not trying to sound like a douche, but I have the cool apartment, the Lambo downstairs. I travel with my team and my family and life is good. And in this video, I'm gonna show you where it all started and all the ups and downs through the journey to how I got here. With that being said, let's dive right in. So we'll start off in my childhood days. This is before I even started with anything business related. So I was born February 26, 2002 in Santa Monica, California. And pretty early on in my life, right when I was around one, my whole family moved down to South Florida, which is where my life really started. The fact is I'm not one to sit here and give you guys some bullshit sob story. No matter how shitty your life is or all the downs in my life and my journey, it doesn't matter. Matter. Life isn't fair and really no one cares about your problems. So I'm not going to give you guys all the downs, but I will say I'm thankful that I grew up with a lot of goods in my life. I had a roof over my head, meals every night, and two loving parents. The one story I will give is when I was 13, my parents got divorced, which didn't really do shit. But yeah, I'm really blessed for my whole childhood. And I think my whole journey did exactly as it should. All the ups and downs was all there for a reason. My whole real story of like my adult and like business life started when I was 16. And we'll get to that, but this is just the childhood sector of everything and as a kid like I was a normal kid I was happy living life and just enjoying school I really liked the social aspect of everything and I, I was like a very friendly person I had a ton of friends and the biggest thing I remember from those early days is the school system literally thought I was like retarded just put me in like some special type of school where instead of you having like one teacher and 20 students it was like one teacher and two students and I was in that for like four years they were making my parents pay like a special fee every year but middle school is where it all got normal I was put into like regular school at sixth grade and that was my first First business experience. So sixth grade, this is like 2014, 15 area. I had just gotten an iPhone. I was given an iPhone pretty young and I had this like iPhone five and I had a bumper for it, a bumper case. And kids were starting to get phones. This is like, I mean, nowadays I feel like kids get phone even sooner, but kids were starting to get iPhones. And I was thinking my little Jewish brain, I was like, everyone needs cases for their phones. And these cases were super expensive. So what did I do? I went to Amazon and I bought, it was a pack of 10 bumper cases for $10. I brought them to school in sixth grade and I sold all 10 of them that day. I think I sold them for five bucks and I did that for like a hundred cases until legitimately every person in my school with an iPhone had my case and I almost like monopolized the iPhones in my school I didn't make much money from it and I even did a swap meet which is like a outdoor flea market and brought like 200 cases there which is pretty fun didn't make much money with it but my first entrepreneurial experience it was definitely a learning lesson for me so seventh eighth grade again average ish student but this is when hoverboard started popping off and I really wanted one but it was like two thousand dollars I'm like this is fucked up I'm not gonna spend two grand on this thing. I, I didn't have two grand. I'm in seventh grade. And I found these hoverboards for wholesale. If you bought a minimum of 10 of them, you'd get them for 300 bucks. I'm like, holy shit, this is the hack. And I messaged the supplier. I'm like, hey, I want to do a sample order to make sure the quality is good for my warehouse. Da, da, da. I made up this whole bullshit story and I wanted to buy one. They forced me to buy five and I didn't want to buy five. So it was so expensive, but I realized if they would give me for 300 each, it wouldn't be hard to sell it to my friends. And I'm like, okay, as long as I could just break even, I could just buy five, break even on four and have mine like for free or for pretty cheap. That's exactly what I did. I bought five of these hoverboards they were super heavy i remember them arriving and i was so happy sold the other four to all my friends like quickly within a week or two and i ended up making a profit on a few of them selling them for like 450 600 i literally just got my own hoverboard for free and had a bit of cash left over my parents and even myself subconsciously grew a sense of like i'm good with money as a kid and from then on i remember always having money this was also the time when i had my bar mitzvah seventh grade jewish thing it's pretty much just like a big party it's like a sweet 16 or a quinceanera and i also got like a thousand dollars in gifts from that which my parents thankfully gave to me and let me keep and that just like stacked me up and I made it to high school ninth grade is where things got fun I had some money and the high school I was going to was around a mile away from my house most kids walked but that just wasn't my style so I decided to try to finesse my way into a golf cart as many of you guys know golf carts like are really cool before you can drive because it's like a car but not a car and it's legal and I didn't know how I'd get one but I did know I'd figure out a way so I'm searching on Craigslist and I find golf carts that were like super expensive but also a few that were like unreasonably cheap and it almost confused me so I hit up the guy call him talk to him mind you 15 years old and my mom is kind of helping me out making sure i'm good at this point it was like super weird because i'm negotiating with this guy for a thousand dollar golf cart but he's like super clearly like sketchy he has this weird warehouse and me and my mom end up going and the golf cart has like some scratched off letters on it we learned in retrospect these golf carts were all stolen i don't know if it's illegal that i ended up buying them but i did i bought it all cash eleven hundred dollars and i had my own golf cart at 15 years old now this was great for obviously two reasons one i now don't have to walk to school and two every one of my friends wants a ride and you gotta understand 
I'm hitting puberty. I'm feeling good. So I get in my golf cart. I'm driving to school every day. I'm offering people rides. You know, the whole gist, the cute girls like I'd go pick up. Overall, it was just a fun point in my life. I was charging some people for rides and that was like the majority of ninth grade. Living my life as a teen, the whole nine yards. Things kind of took a downturn when like we were halfway through the year. You guys know the gist in high school, a lot of people party. I was the kid who threw parties and like the first real party I threw, it wasn't a huge party. It was probably 20 people, 25 people, but my school was just on their shit with that. They didn't want young people drinking or doing bad things. And because of that, the principal literally showed up at 11 p.m. at night at my house. I was like, oh fuck. And all I remember from there is things started going downhill. The first major like, oh shit moment was my mom was in Israel for those two weeks on a vacation. So obviously it was, there was no one in my house. It was just me and my brother. And my mom called me like three days later, the principal spoke with her and they pretty much said like, this is not good. You are the bad kid. You are the person that's like dragging this whole friend group down. And they're like, screw this kid for lack of better words. And from there I had haste with the school. I feel like it's a repeating factor in my life. Cause even these days I feel like some people just fucking hate me. But past that later that year, they pretty much gave me an ultimatum. Either they're going to kick me out and expel me from the school, or I can sign a contract saying I need to get good grades, pretty much be an angel child and not do any of this crazy shit. Main crazy shit being like, don't throw parties, don't drink or do drugs or anything. And I was cool with all of it. I didn't, by the way, I've never done drugs. Like I, I've heavily been against weed my whole life. I've tried it a few times. It's always fucked me up. All I do is drink. So I was like, cool. Like I didn't care. I just wanted to stay in the school. All my friends were here. And yeah, moving into 10th grade, I was on a contract with my school. I was pretty much a prisoner. I had to like really abide by rules and it didn't start well. First day of school, I like was climbing on the new furniture to try to get over these people. It's like, it's kind of like a crowded table and principals walking by the head of school. And I had a meeting with her three days before saying I wouldn't do anything right before school started. So it didn't start well. First six months of school, when I tell you guys, I wasn't unhappy, but it wasn't like, I didn't feel like me. It was a weird phase in my life where I was really trying to abide by these rules, but it was hard for me. I am a really big believer in the school system. I have nothing against it, but it, I'm genuinely, I'm not the type of person who does well with that. I'm a bit of an abnormal human being. And yeah, things really fell off a cliff. 2018 is the first real year of business for me. As starting in 2018, I got into like sneakery selling and kind of like hype beast flipping. Stuff like Supreme, Bape, etc. I was buying and selling it and I wasn't doing it well. I wasn't making a ton of money, but I was trying to figure this life shit out. I was trying to figure out this whole money making shit out. And I didn't know I would drop out at this point. I thought I'd likely have to switch schools, but it was pretty much the second half of the school year and early 2018 where my grades fucking plummet. It was when I got into Supreme and I realized like this works and I almost just like gave up on the school. I was like, okay, I'm either going to like go to a different school or they're just going to kind of like let me be. I almost like was trying to call their bluff to see if they'd kick me out. And long story short, seven Fs and a 1.3 GPA with my whole ninth grade throwing party history did exactly that. They pretty much told me you're done. You're going to be kicked out of the school. And the last like month of school was literally a joke to me. I was like messing with my math teacher. I was telling my friends pretty much I was going to leave specifically two of my closest friends, but I kept it semi low key. But past all that, the point is I am now 16 years old. I had my license. This is mid 2018. And the second final, which is like the end of the school year, you take these big tests. If you guys don't know what finals are, I quit. I didn't study for shit, by the way, this whole year, pretty much like specifically this 2018 year, the last like six months of school. I literally didn't study for a test, didn't read shit. I didn't do any of that. And the second final, I walked in, I looked at it and I, I realized, I'm like, why am I even taking this? Like, this is just like a waste of time at this point. And at this point, I was already like dabbling with Supreme. Because of Supreme, I also started an Instagram page to promote the Supreme. And I got pretty good at like meme page marketing to market my page to try to get more eyeballs to it. And I was like already dabbling in this like money making stuff. At this point, I must have had a few thousand dollars. I was like, I, I learned how to get free Uber Eats for like six months. I got super banned on Uber Eats. But I was like, why am I here? I feel like I can get out of this. And I did exactly that. I got my little Honda Civic. I didn't tell anyone anything. I gave my one teacher, like I dapped him up super close to me. He knew I was going to dip. I told him like a month before. I told him I'm out and I handed in a blank final, said bye to that one teacher. I didn't tell any of my friends other than Ezra and Lugasi, shout out you guys. And I left and that was the last day I stepped foot in that school. From there, I talked to my mom about it and my mom was kind of like the decision maker for me. My dad was okay with it as well. And at that point, I was officially a high school dropout. I was out of school and my older brother was the main kind of pivot point of just someone I was looking up to. He was already doing bigger stuff, specifically in social media marketing and meme page stuff on Instagram. And I kind of took that lead to start trying to figure out marketing on influencer pages. I tried stock trading and penny trading. And that like second half of 2018 was weird. Tried drop shipping, didn't do well at all. Uh, I was just trying all these little side hustles at home. I made a deal with my mom. Like I said, hey, give me like six months to a year. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to make 50 grand profit. I'll have 50 grand in a bank account. And I was like super clear with her that if I didn't do it, I'd go back to school. I was like our deal person to person. She believed in me and I made it happen. 2019 was my first real year figuring stuff out. So 2019, like I hadn't really figured stuff out, but I was trying a lot of stuff for the six months prior and like the end of 2018. And I'm now like a full on high school dropout. I'll be super clear. And especially to any of you guys thinking about dropping 
dropping out of anything. Like really think it through on if you need to do it or not. In my case, I didn't really have a choice. Like I, I kind of like almost got forced to leave, almost got expelled, but it was a weird time in my life. Specifically, I remember being 16, turning 17. This is like early 2019. And I was about to turn 17 and I got into like real drop shipping. I tried Facebook ads selling AirPods and this was my first like legit store. I really was confident in it. I remember before I even like had any good ads, the first ad I made, I filmed myself, which nowadays I'd look back to it and be like, what the fuck are you doing? I could have just taken ads, but I filmed these ads myself. I used like a cake spinner. I moved the AirPods to like, you know, move in a circular motion. But either or, like I made these ads and I felt so confident. It was a 40% off sale. And I was like, this is going to work. And it did. I remember the first day I ran Facebook ads, it dominated, it crushed. I was selling them as like wireless earpods and I was selling black, pink, green, and white ones. And it, it was like literally knockoff, uh, like earpods. But it's funny because that like main product that took off was also the first product of Luke and Nets, who I kind of like look up to as a mentor still to this day with all the stuff he's been doing. Yeah, that like first year was crazy, 2019. And you can imagine my mom, my dad, my brother, they were all like pretty hype. Uh, my brother even kind of dabbled into it with me as he's like, holy shit, Jacob, this is big. And here I am, the 17 year old kid. My store did half a million that year. I actually did it on two different sites as I ran into some hiccups, which I've talked about in past videos, but long story short, big letter to my door, shut the store down and you're gonna get sued. So they were cracking down on people marketing like fake AirPods as earpods. And at that point I had to stop selling AirPods, but that year was crazy. I marketed this site. I probably spent 150K in ads. I did like five, 600K and the profit was pretty nice. I think at the end of the year, probably had right around hundred grand and my mom and dad and just pretty much my whole family. We were all on the same page that myself, my older brother, we were gonna do this whole entrepreneurial stuff and go a few years seeing kind of what happens. We didn't have a long-term plan. I didn't talk to my parents about college. We just knew like worst case, I could just continue and finish high school. And at this point also was when I was given the question of should I get a GED? And I told my mom and dad, if I don't get a GED, it'll be a way better story later on. And it's funny because here I am today and this is the first time I feel like I'm really looking back and I could say it that I never needed it and I'm happy I didn't get it. And when I do write a book, I'm gonna say that shit again. I'm excited for that. I'm gonna wait till more like 100 mil though for the book. And yeah, 2019 pretty much wrapped up. I'm now pretty much a full on entrepreneur. I am still kind of dabbling between projects as mind you, the AirPod store plummeted, but now we're fading into 2020 and that's where things really started picking up and let's dive into 2020. So 2020, I was like still dabbling and thinking on if I should try to continue selling AirPods, but it was just super sketchy with the whole Apple situation. So I just fully dropped it. And it was frankly a weird year as I kind of had this like huge come up and also like all my friends saw it. Like I had that persona of like, this is like this entrepreneur kid, he can't not do well. I had this crazy year and then everything like plateaued and I, now I didn't have anything going for me. And it was a weird time. I was a little sad. I was a little like lost. And I also bought a Rolex halfway through 2019, which I forgot to mention. And it was a Rolex Datejust 16233. I still have it to this day. It was a shitty watch and I was never going to sell it as it's my first watch. And moving into 2020, I, I didn't do much. I was like still an average-ish kid. Mind you, I'm 17. I was turning 18. I went to LA with my friends. I was playing Fortnite. Keep in mind, I, I'm a high school dropout. I didn't have much friends. I was like really isolated and alone at this time. And I faded away from most of my friends from high school. So I was kind of just like figuring out what was next. And that leads me into 2021. So at this point, like I had different opportunities and almost myself, like I thought like, oh, the grass is greener on the other side, stock trading, all these different opportunities. Fact is drop shipping worked for me. It made sense. I knew the formula. And this is when I realized like I need to make this work. And in 2021 is where I really dove into TikTok ads. This is where this shit really started like picking up. And this is also when I decided to move out. I had money saved up. I'm like, let me get out of my house because it was almost just depressing to be in my hometown. All my friends left like Boca and you guys can imagine all your friends go to college. You're just sitting there alone. It's not fun. So I decided to move out. I moved to a beach apartment in Sunny Isles and midway through 2021, I got into TikTok ads. This was probably the biggest turning point in my life as TikTok ads then led me to TikTok. And I'm going to dive into this a bit, starting with TikTok ads. So getting into TikTok ads, long story short, allowed CPMs to drop a ton. And by CPMs dropping a ton, I mean advertising got cheaper. It was cheaper to market to people and therefore easier to do well in dropshipping. And just frankly, any store I started hit. I probably started six sites that year and I think four of them hit. Specifically, it was a blender bottle brand named Jimix, Chuggy, which was like a beer snorkel brand, a hoverball store, and then the sweatpants store. The sweatpants store specifically was quick. I only ran that for three months. It did like four or 500K. Shout out to Hose Mo. I partnered up with him on that. But you guys got to get the point of like, I was literally like figuring it out. This is my point of like, I'm having all these ups and downs, but this is where like, it's like I shot up to an extent. And all these four sites, one of which Jimix, I still run to this day. It's not over seven figures. Just really gave me a good footing to understand like drop shipping is where my life is. And just marketing in general was something I really enjoyed. I got really good at TikTok ads and obviously running four different products. You can imagine I gained a lot of 
of skills from it. I learned product sourcing, branding, the whole nine yards. I mean, I had ordered product to warehouses. I'd gotten the product branded, etc. The point is I learned a lot. And this is also when I decided to start posting TikToks, specifically my mom, shout out my mom. And I did a podcast with her in the past. We, uh, she told me like, Jacob, your story is like pretty weird. And you should post about this. This is right before I moved out. And like a month before I moved out, I started posting TikToks and they were doing really well. People loved it. A month into TikToks after my blue room TikToks, I had a ton. They did really well. I bought a Tesla and I moved to Miami, specifically Sunny Isles and my beach apartment. It was 5k a month. It was right in the smack, smack, like beginning and crazy part of COVID. I got a sick deal on it. The apartment now rents for like 11,000 USD a month. And I moved out there and this was like a huge turning point in my life. As now I'm doing TikToks, talking about my story. I'm running some major drop shipping stores. And this is when life started getting really fun. I had my first real like big boy trip and I flew out to Colorado, Vail to be specific. We rented a crazy Airbnb, just having fun and like starting to live this like picturesque life. This is also in Q3, Q4 of 2021, where I started pushing some real numbers drop shipping. I'm talking like 100, 200,000 dollar months and things just started getting really good. And mind you, that's between like all the stores. So moving into 2022 is when things were really picking up. And at this point, I'm running multiple drop shipping stores. I have like all these followers on TikTok. Some people are deciding to pay me. I didn't really have a course or any training built out and I decided to make one. This is when I really started like thinking I should build out my mentorship. In early 2022, I built a course. I like started actually taking on a ton of people. And a few months into that, I was like, whoa, this is intense. Like literally that was my reaction. It was just too much. I way too many people were hitting me up. I like wasn't enjoying it at all. And I fully kind of put a pause to bringing on new people. I think anyone who joins my mentorship, I don't want it to be like a little course or like one of these programs you see online. I want it to be, you have me and I'm there to help you. But I like faded away from the whole mentorship vibe. I just kind of chilled with taking on new students. And at this point too, I'm, I'm running my stores. I'm posting TikToks, gaining followers. And one of the best parts of this year is I started my agency. Uh, Talk Media, an agency I've ran now for like what, a year, year and a half with my buddy Kyle. We started with the simple reasoning. Like I knew this whole TikTok marketing thing was super simple. And we started a great agency, a great team. I really took a pause off the whole mentorship thing. I was still helping the current students, but I didn't know if I wanted to do it long term. And then later that year is when I had the decision of like, I want to drop all these random stores and I wanted to full focus a few things. Those three things I picked was my agency, Gemix, my main brand that I still run to this day and starting a protein line behind the whole product and my mentorship. I wanted to make the mentorship real and good. And moving into 2023, that was my goal. I legitimized the shit out of my mentorship. I really built an amazing kind of like video library and path. I have a really solid support system where you have access to me and it's something I can handle. I do group calls and the biggest thing is I have a really solid interview process that any of you guys can't see and won't ever even get into. And the reason for that is I don't want to work with a million people. It's too much. It's not possible. I take on a few students that I really believe in and want to help. And the agency, I was able to build out an amazing team and we have it pretty much fully automated at this point, taking on and helping new clients. And then my main brand, Gemix. My plan with that is to build an amazing protein line and continue scaling it. The product as well as I have such a good brand appeal and the protein line is also great. Yo, here, can you grab one? But here's Mix Ups by Gemix. And yeah, that's my goal. And moving into 2023, here we are today. I'm working really hard on those three things, but I'm just enjoying the process. And through it all, you guys can imagine, I've made a lot of money. I've enjoyed some trips and all the little douchey guru things. But I didn't want to talk about that too much this video. I just want to show you guys the path. And here I am today. Everything's going great. And there's so much more to come. Keep in mind that all the ups and downs that you guys see, it never ends. I still have ups and downs and so much stuff I'm working on, stress, etc. And I'm blessed to say this year, I'm going to clear multi millions of dollars in my team, 30, 45 people between all the three businesses and just living life, enjoying. And I want you guys to really feel that and understand you have to enjoy the journey, all the ups and downs. And that's my life story. I hope you enjoyed. And if you want to see a video on how to get to 10K a month as a beginner, just me guiding you guys on how to do it if I was in your spot, you can click the top video in the description where I give you guys a link to that YouTube video. But other than that, that's my life story. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.